Hey guys, Ben from Back Photography here, and today we're going to be doing a slightly different video. We're here in the studio and we're going to be doing some catalog fashion photography with Storm Brooks Hamilton. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new content in the future. And let's get right into the video and talk about how you can shoot catalog fashion photography in a very simple studio setup. So the idea behind this video is we're going to try to do some catalogue photography that looks similar to something that you would see at Target or Kmart or Big W or something like that. So what me and Storm did is we went to some of these stores and we bought a quick outfit, something that we could use for this photo shoot. And in this video we're going to be talking about the equipment we used, we're going to be talking about lighting and how you can set up your lighting in a similar way. We're going to be looking at one photo from a catalogue and we're going to sort of dissect it and see how they did that photo. Then we're going to shoot some photos and have a look at them and then edit them in Photoshop. So the equipment that I used in this photo shoot was two Jimbei DM5 studio heads. And these are really good quality heads and they are super cheap. They're only about 250 to 300 US dollars per head. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for these studio strobes because I highly recommend them. They're super good quality for the price and they're very consistent with the light and the light color that they produce. I was also using a Jimbei TRV6 Universal Trigger to control the strobes. Now this didn't work on my Sony a7R2, so I was using my Canon 5D Mark IV, and the lens on my camera was a Sigma 50mm f1.4 art lens. So for this photo shoot I was also using two light modifiers for my strobes. I was using I believe a 120cm softbox, and also I was using a 30 centimeter by 120 centimeter rectangle strip softbox, which also had a grid inside as well. Now I'm gonna explain why I used these two light modifiers later in the video, but now let's have a look at some of Target's catalog photos and see if we can dissect them and see what's going on in the photo. Okay, so here we have three different adverts from Target and they're all female clothing, just like what we're shooting at the moment. So one thing that really strikes out at me right from the beginning is the eyes always have the catch light showing and they always have really, really sharp and highlighted eyes in the images. The next thing I've noticed from these photos is that the hair is always incredibly shiny. So we're gonna have to do some work on the hair in post-production I think as well. In terms of lighting, it seems like the main lighting setup they have is they have one softbox, which is a big octo box in this sort of area here, and then they either have some fill light with a rectangular grid softbox, something similar to what I have in my studio, or they have a reflector, something like that, or they're using something like natural light with a window, but I suspect it's gonna be either a reflector or an additional light source like the rectangular softbox that we see in my studio. So we've got everything we need. We're just gonna have the two lights set up. And now if you don't wanna use two lights or you're a bit intimidated to use two lights, you can absolutely just use one light, that big octa box, and put it at a 45 degree angle above and to either the left or the right of your model. And you can get some really beautiful images that way. And if you wanna take it one step further, you can use a reflector and then get a little bit softer light on the other side of your model's face. Or if you'd like, you can also use two lights as well. One other thing I noticed about these photos is that they're always cut off about halfway up their leg between their knee and their pelvis. So we're gonna try and replicate something similar to that as well. As for posing, you see a lot of smiles and a lot of loose movements and that sort of thing in these photos. So I've told Storm just to move around a lot, do a lot of smiling, be a bit silly, and we'll get photos that way because that's how the posing seems to be for these adverts in Target. So it might be a nice idea if you're shooting in a studio with a model to put some music on and just have a little bit of fun and see how the photos are looking and make sure to show your model every so often what photos you've got so she can get an idea of what she's doing wrong, what she's doing right, and then you can get better photos as you go. So let's talk about these big soft boxes and why we're using these two soft boxes in particular in this photo shoot. Basically, the bigger your softbox is, the softer the light is gonna be on the thing that it's shining on. And in these photos for Target, all of the lighting is always incredibly soft and incredibly spaced out. So we're gonna to wanna to use a massive softbox, really the biggest one that we can find, because that will produce the softest light possible. 
That's the reason why we're using the Octobox. It gives really soft, flattering light. And the reason that we're using a grid rectangular softbox for the other side is basically just so that we can illuminate Storm's entire body and get a nice even fill light on the other side of her body. Because in this studio, there really wasn't any windows. There wasn't any lighting overhead or anything like that really. So we're really relying on the softbox light from the octobox and then we're relying on the fill light from the rectangular grid and then any bounce light that we see on the white background and white floor. So that's why we use the rectangular softbox and the octobox but you could use two octoboxes if you wanted to, you could use two square softboxes, really doesn't matter but this is the perfect setup in my opinion for this type of photo shoot. And for this particular photo shoot having both of the strobes on the lower setting was perfect. So this is the photo that we're going to be looking at today and going through the editing on. It was shot at 50mm on a aperture of 2.8, a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second, and an ISO of 100, which is the native ISO of my camera. So the link to this photo is going to be in the description as well if you'd like to edit along. And thank you for everyone who is sending me the photos that you've edited on Instagram. I really like looking at all the different edits that you do on my photos and it's interesting to see how everyone's editing styles differ as well. So 50mm is a great choice for this sort of photo shoot because 50mm is sort of the same size focal length as something that your eyes would see. So it feels like it's not distorted in a strange way to add any different dynamic to the image. It just looks like you're looking at the person as you would see a person in real life. I shot at an aperture of f2.8 because I didn't want a super shallow depth of field. I was just shooting at a sort of regular depth of field of 2.8 so we don't have a crazy blurry background or anything like that shooting at a 200th of a second because my subject wasn't moving so we didn't need to use a super fast shutter speed but also you always want to use a shutter speed above about 1 100th of a second when you're shooting a person just to make sure that everything is nice and sharp in the final image. And I was shooting at an ISO of 100 because that is the best ISO for my camera for shooting the lowest noise possible images when you get to control all the lighting conditions and set the exposure exactly how you want. So now that we've gone through everything, let's hop into Photoshop and do the editing process on this image. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and let's have a look at this image. First of all, I think we did nicely on getting those catch lights in the eyes. We're gonna have to do some work on the hair to make it look as shiny as in the target adverts. And also I didn't crop it quite right. It probably should have been cropped a little bit more here. And we can see that the jeans are kind of a little bit sort of gray and dirty here. Even though they're brand new, um, there is a little bit of dirt on these ones. So we're gonna have to edit that up as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of clarity just to make this entire image pop and then I'm going to actually up the shadows a little bit and then add some contrast in there as well. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of vibrance to the image as well. Then I'm going to mess with the color balance just slightly just because we're getting a slightly pink hue and I think that's about right. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm just going to get the brush tool and drop the temperature down to about 13 points and then I'm just going to paint away that little color problem there. Now ideally we should have noticed this while we were shooting but unfortunately we didn't so we're just going to edit that out like so. So that's looking a lot better than it was. So a little bit more here and that's looking much better. Okay so Firstly, we're just going to make the eyes pop even more than they are right now, but we're only going to add a little bit of clarity and exposure, not too much, otherwise we might give our model here laser beam eyes. So just adding a little bit like so, just a subtle change, like if you go too far it starts to look uh, a little bit crazy, so we just want to add a little bit, just a subtle change, um, just something that's very subtle that you would hardly notice when you look at the photo. But all these little changes really do add up and make a big difference at the end. So next we're just going to add a little bit more tone into the eyebrows. Perfect. And that's everything for the eyebrows as well. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're really going to make the hair shine like the hair shined in those target adverts. So we're going to add some clarity and a little bit of exposure and just paint that into the hair.
Now, I'm not going to go full crazy with this photo and spend hours and hours on it like you might expect for a target advert. What you would want to do is get rid of all these hairs and things like that. But in the interest of time, this was just a quick photo shoot and we're just going to get like an idea of how to take these photos. Okay, so I think that's actually everything that we're going to do in Camera Raw. Now let's jump into Photoshop and finish off this image. Okay, so one thing that you'll notice when you look at target adverts is the models always have really, really, really smooth skin. So we're gonna do a bit of skin retouching here. I'm gonna fast forward it as well. So this video isn't 25 minutes long and it's just me retouching skin. So let me fast forward this and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, the next thing we are going to do is just whiten the teeth slightly. So we're just going to make a selection of the teeth like this. Doesn't have to be accurate. Then we're going to go image, adjustments, hue and saturation. We're going to go to the yellows channel, boost the saturation all the way up. And then we're going to use the tool down here just to get the yellows in here. Okay, and I think that's about right. And then next we're just going to drop them so they're not showing quite as much in the photo. So before and after. Subtle difference, but something that will make a big difference to the final photo. So that is everything. I think I'll leave it there. One other thing you might want to do is just fluff the hair out a little bit, but I don't want to make this video too long. So I think we're going to leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video and also hit that bell as well. So you don't miss my next few videos that are coming out really, really soon. So that's everything for this video. Remember, everything's going to be in the description. So the raw files are going to be there. All of the equipment I use is going to be there as well. So everything that you need will be in the description for you to check out. So once again, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.